Right, so here we go, another episode of Comic Talk. My name is Brad, and I'll be your host. So for today we're going to be talking about Superman issue number 27. So both of the covers for issue number 27 of Superman are very different. The one we have Superman and John kind of flying away from the farm, looking longingly as if they're never going to go back to the house again. And it doesn't really coincide with what you're reading on the inside. Yes, they do go off on a family trip, but it's nothing like what you see on this cover. I think it's completely misrepresentative of the inside of the story. While the other cover has Lois, John, and Superman marching through what appears to be a very 4th of July slash Independence Day themed battlefield and just having John and, and Clark playing the drums and Lois playing that flute I think that it really matches the overall theme on the inside between the covers and you'll see why when we get further into this video. Now our story begins with a very exhausted Superman just wanting to get home. He's been gone away from the farm for quite a while. He's exhausted. He's so tired, in fact, that on the way home, he falls asleep in midair and manages to crash land in his own backyard before coming into the house and seeing an exhausted John and Lois who were trying to wait up for Clark to come home, but they themselves fell asleep. Everyone is exhausted due to the previous events in Superman comics, and they just need a break. Now Superman is so exhausted when he comes home, he finds the sleeping Lois and John, puts each one over each shoulder, goes up the stairs, puts him in bed, and then he himself passes out in bed. He takes off his super shirt, but leaves on his super pants and boots, and just passes out face down in bed. When he wakes up in the morning, Lois and John, who have woken up before him, have decided it's a good idea to go and rent an RV. He comes downstairs, finds this RV that Lois and John have surprised him with, and it's time for a road trip. Now this road trip across the country is more or less a chance not only to relax and refresh from all the stuff they've been going through as a family, which is important when you're domesticated, you need to take time as a family. What superhero better to be domesticated than Superman? But it's not only a chance for that refreshing, but it's also a time to A, the writers, for the writers to let the audience know just how much Superman and Lois love their country. And B, it's a chance for Superman and Lois to teach John about their country, some of the historical things about their country, and to show their appreciation about their country to John. I think it's a magnificent issue just for that alone. I personally feel like another way they could have done the cover for this issue actually would have been the previous cover where Superman had his arm out and there was the eagle and the American flag behind him. They could have done that exact cover but had Lois on one side and John on the other and that would have been a miraculous cover as well. Someone could have done a variant of that. Instead we got Superman and John looking back and all sad like puppies and stuff. I didn't like that cover, okay? I think I've already covered that. Now, although there isn't one supervillain in this issue, not one moment of conflict that comes to fisticuffs, there are still some very notable moments in this issue. For one, Lois and Clark take John to the memorial of Deborah Sampson, where he learns that this woman fought valiantly alongside of the men as a military personnel, only she hid her gender. So she fought as a man, everyone believed she was a man, and once it came out that this person who had fought so hard and done such a good job for her country was a woman, they didn't give her trouble for it, but they weren't going to pay her the pay that she was due. Well, she fought for it and she got it. Good for her. There's a moment of levity between Superman and John with Lois watching from the roof of the RV where Superman and John decide they want to go bodyboarding at Niagara Falls, down the falls. It's awesome. And it's one of those moments that is just perfect for a Superman comic that revolves around Superman and his domestic life. Seeing Superman being playful with his son, John, it was a breath of fresh air compared to all of the heaviness that we've seen in the past who knows how many issues. There's a time in the comic where they're going down the highway and they're in the RV, Lois is driving, John is also in the front and he sees a coexist sticker stuck to someone's bumper and he questions Lois about it, asking what it is. Lois explains that the sticker basically means whether you're Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Wicca, you believe in science, whatever, everyone needs to try and get along with each other and respect each other's beliefs. Thus the term coexist. She goes on to relate that one of the wonderful things about America is that it was a country that was founded on religious tolerance and freedoms and that nobody should be persecuted or shot down for their religious beliefs or the lack thereof. 
I think it's a wonderful teachable moment for John, and it's a great point in the story. There's also a moment where one of their destinations ends up being a very famous World War I monument in New York City that is one of John's picks, and he chooses it because it's the only one that actually looked scary. In his own words, it looked like the soldiers were running out of hell. They also end up at Independence Hall in Philadelphia, where Clark and Lois explain to John that yes, all of the people behind the walls here were not fighting a physical war and getting in the way of bullets. They nonetheless had quite the battle because it was no easy task getting the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution made, but just the Declaration of Independence itself was an act of treason and the punishment for treason was hanging from the neck until dead. And so the men who fought behind the walls as well for America's freedom were also just as valiant. And again, they handled that quite wonderfully. Now for as much as I liked all of those previous scenes, I gotta say there's one more that warms my heart that much more, and that's the scene where Lois, John, and Clark happen upon an ex-military vet that is clearly disabled, he's in a wheelchair, and they take him out for dinner at a diner. Where the people really aren't treating this military vet very well, they kinda want him to leave, and Superman is having none of it. And so, as Clark, he kind of stands up and he has his say where he talks about the fact that this military vet fought for the freedom of Americans and his face should be up on the wall and not the pictures of celebrities that they have there. And some people like it and some people don't, but that's the price you pay to speak the truth to a bunch of ignorant people. Some people are gonna applaud you and some people are just gonna get offended. Now I think that it's really cool that they took the time to address this very real situation slash problem in this issue. American vets every day are treated quite poorly by a lot of their countrymen. Yes, some people treat American vets like their heroes, while others tend to treat them quite poorly, even though they themselves would never go and stand in harm's way to defend the freedoms that they currently enjoy on a daily basis. After all, independence slash freedom is not something that was fought for once, but rather it's something that is maintained on a daily basis. Now the whole issue basically ends up with the super family having their trailer parked at a trailer park for the night, and they're having a marshmallow cook-off beside the trailer over a fire. John's falling asleep, Superman puts him to bed, Lois and Clark end up on the roof of the RV, sharing each a glass of wine. When Superman's Justice League watch goes off, and off he flies into the night. Now this issue was wonderful for a multitude of reasons. Not only did I like the artwork on the inside, it's not everyone's cup of tea. I happen to like this artist and I love the cover art. I wish that he did all the work on the inside because I like his artwork just that much better. But this issue is exemplatory in the fact that they took America's hero because make no mistake about it, Superman, although he's a hero for the world, he is America's hero and they used him and his family, this domesticated family man Superman, to make a love letter about America to Americans. I think it's brilliant, and I think that it couldn't have worked better than with him. It wouldn't have worked with Batman, Green Lantern, or Flash nearly as smoothly as it does with Superman, America's hero. Now I give this issue a straight up 10 out of 10 because I can't think of anything about it that I would like to change. I enjoyed the artwork and the story, I love the cover art, at least for the one that I got. So for me it's a straight up 10 out of 10, would buy again. As a side note, I really wish they would take all the coverage here that George Jimenez has been doing for Superman comics and blow them up and turn them into posters and sell them online at the DC Collectible store because I would love to line my wall with these covers. They're awesome. Anyhow, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you taking the time to do so. If you liked it, please slap a like on it. Leave any comments you have down below. Subscribe if you think you might want to see more of this content. And I will see you with the next episode of Comic Talk. Goodbye.